Hello everyone. Namaskara. Friends, let me welcome you to the fourth lecture on quantitative techniques. Today, I will be discussing on data presentation basically graphical presentation and various types of charts we come across there, histogram, pie chart and some of the things like that. Friends, as I told in the beginning, data data presentation is an important part of uh, quantitative techniques. We have heard in the earlier lectures on data collection, data tabulation, classification and such of the things. After collecting data, very important part of the data handling or data interpretation will be data presentation by charts and diagrams and this activity will really is an important activity of data interpretation. So, let us friends start with bar diagrams. What are bar diagrams? Bar diagrams are one dimensional diagrams. Bar diagrams are one of the easiest and most commonly used devices of presenting most of the business and economic data and of course, data related to social science and natural science also. So, therefore, why data presentation looks to be important because data presentation help us to identify the important information contained in the data. After having collected data, next very important job is to present the data in a usable format or in such a way so that information contained in the data can be, uh, can be drawn very easily and quickly for analysis and then of course, for uh, eliciting some inferences and then of course, uh, it will help us to take decisions at the end and that is why data presentation plays a very important part in the data interpretation process. Points for bar chart are as follows friends let us see. All the bars drawn in a single study should be of uniform width. So, as far as one dimensional data presentation is concerned mainly bars and other things. What is uh, important there uh, uh, one has to notice is that the width of all the bars should be uniform because it is one dimensional chart. Proper but uniform spacing should be given between bars. We will be using various bars. Basically, bars are meant for compar compar comparative studies. So, therefore, spacing of bars should be equal as far as possible and width of the bars are also should be equal for effective comparison and uh, analysis. Then third point to be noted while working on bar diagrams is height of the rectangles or bars taken proportional to the magnitude of the observations. What I mean is if there are four items, there will be frequencies related to items. The bars are erected on the items and height of these bars are proportional to or equal to magnitude of the uh, related observations. That is one of the rule uh, while drawing bar diagrams. All the bars should be constructed on the same baseline. Again, this is an important rule to be uh, kept in mind because for comparative study, erecting bars or placing bars with the same width, with the same equal spacing and on the same line will, will help us for easy comparison. That is why bars are to be placed on uh, single baseline. Then friends, it is desirable to write figures represented by bars at the top of the bars. Why? Because if the observations are uh, made visible exactly on the top of the bars, it will help us to uh, get an information quickly and it will also help us to compare uh, uh, the information contained in the data and that is why writing figures on the top of the bar seems to be advantageous. Next friends, bars may be drawn vertically or horizontally. Since they are unit, uh, one dimensional, either they can be uh, uh, drawn on the horizontal axis, they can also be drawn on the vertical axis, both way it can be done because comparison can, can be done easily with that idea. Next friends, another rule to be followed is wherever possible the bar should be arranged from left to right, from top to bottom in case of horizontal bars in order to, 
in order in the order of magnitude to give a pleasant effect okay this is again for uh, easy reference friends after having looked at uh, some common rules uh, to be followed uh, uh, while drawing bar diagrams let us look at types of bar diagrams that we come across usually uh, in the process of data presentation basically for effective presentation the first one is simple bar chart and number 2 is subdivided or component bar chart third one is percentage bar diagram next one is multiple bar diagram and deviation or bilateral bilateral bar diagram these are various kinds of bar diagrams we will be discussing one by one hereafter friends let us look at simple bar diagram now simple bar diagram is the simplest of the bar diagrams and used frequently in practice for comparative study of two or more items or values of a single variable or a single classification or category of data such as sales profit production population size of different place geographical regions etc and that is why basically simple bars are nothing but bars erected on uh, respective categories with the height of those bars proportional to the respective values and uh, let us illustrate what we mean by simple bar diagram by a simple example friends the example goes like this following is the data on number of rural candidates appeared for kset exam in the last 5 years professor onkar kakde chairman department of journalism and mass communication would like to see the data in a bar diagram format and the information available from the department goes like this data is collected from 2014 to 2018 and number of candidates appeared on all those 5 years of course these figures are hypothetical just for illustration in 2014 there were 901 students in 2015 1792 students and in the year 2016 2500 in 2017 there were 4416 four students and in the year 2018 5115 students these are number of candidates appeared for kset examinations in the last 5 years from 2014 to 18 friends on the right side of the table we have a bar chart look at these bar charts they are exactly as per the rules discussed earlier all the bars are erected on respective four year five years and the values of the uh, number of candidates appeared on the respective years are written on the top of the bars so therefore therefore bars are erected on different years with their height proportional to the respective values and uh, we have said in the beginning that this is a data presentation for easy and re ready reference what is the advantage of this simple bar chart friends look at the bars one can easily find that number of candidates has increased from 2000 to 2018 drastically and therefore every year there are more number of aspirants for kset examinations than the previous year that is what the information that one can gather from this simple bar chart though charts are simple but information available is very important very easy and very effective that is what the advantage of this simple bar chart friends now let us look at another example for understanding what we mean by component bar chart and the definition goes like this component bar diagrams are to be used if the total magnitude of the given variable is to be divided into various parts or components and then and then these bars can be used for comparative studies basically whenever there is a situation of comparing bar between the group and within the group we make use of this component bar diagram and therefore the advantage of this chart is comparison can be done between the groups and within the group that's what the advantage of this component bar chart compared to the earlier earlier one that is simple bar chart friends let us try to understand this component bar chart with an illustrative example and example is is this professor vijay kurishetty chairman of the department want the following data to be presented by a suitable diagram friends here what is given is the information is given 
and uh, what is asked is a suitable diagram must be used to elicit uh, information for competitive studies between the group and within the group and the table information contained in the table goes like this see the information is, is given on expenditure on various items of a families there are two families family a and b expenditure on food is given expenditure on clothing education and miscellaneous like this information on four categories of a family are given and similar information is also given of family b and therefore friends here we have two families with subdivisions within as far as expenditure on various items of the total expenditure is concerned and therefore there is a need to compare within the group what percentage or what amount of expenditure has gone to the items within the family uh, means uh, for which item the more amount has gone for which item less amount has gone can be studied using these components and between the groups also we can be uh, means things can be compared and that is why two component bars for family a and family b are given here on the right side of the table we have component bars for for example family a you see 150 rupees in terms of uh, of course uh, rupees in thousands or hundred is not given that is not necessary our need is to understand the applicability of component bar diagram and therefore if 100 and 150 rupees has gone for food see if you look at the table 190 rupees has gone for miscellaneous what does it reflect family spends more money on miscellaneous things and next next item it means a major item major amount that has gone to the item is food that is 150 and then 125 rupees has gone for clothing and only 25 rupees has gone for education so this information reflects out of the total income of a family what part of the income goes to the food what part of the income goes to the clothing education and miscellaneous this information helps us to make planning for next period that way and if you look at family b there also you see more amount of money has gone for food that is 150 next amount has gone for miscellaneous if you look at both the families huge amount has gone for miscellaneous of the one family and huge amount has gone for food of the second family and that is why this kind of diagram or diagramic presentation will help us to compare two groups and also within the group comparison can also be done that is what the advantage of these kind of component bar diagrams with this friends let us go to third kind of data presentation that is percentage bar diagram advantage of percentage bar diagram is uh, advantage of percentage bar diagram or component bar diagram just what we have discussed earlier is that here units can be compared in terms of percentages so that we will get a better information for comparison between the two families or between the two groups and also within the group better comparison can be done because data is standardized standardized in the sense the given data is expressed in terms of percentage that will help us to compare within the group between the group in a much better way and that is what the advantage of this percentage bar diagram friends let us see what is this percentage bar diagram the component bar diagram presented graphically on present sorry percentage basis will highlight the relative importance of various component parts to the whole hence this kind of presentation will help us to highlight the relative importance of items and hence is an effective form of data presentation as i told you standardization technique will help us for better comparison between the uh, groups and also within the groups friends we have information in the table uh, given uh, on the left side of the slide we have population category populations are population are divided like children means uh, kids boys and girls another category young men and women third category middle aged men and women one more category elderly persons why this kind of information is collected is because 
such informations are useful for the department of social work for working on framing policies and helping government to plan for what kind of social security programs can be taken up to these kind of group of population so therefore let us try to illustrate with an example with an example collected by professor s a kaji chairman department of social work what he has done is he has collected data from villages and towns on some of the categories given in the table that is given in the table now the professor would like to see the data in a suitable bar diagram so that relative importances of the items are highlighted and that is why percentage bar chart has been selected as a suitable bar diagram for presenting this data and also fulfill the need of need and requirement of professor s a kaji friends we have various categories of the population as i told you children boys and girls young men women middle aged men women and elderly and the data on <coughs> all these categories are collected separately for village and also for town again for comparing what kind of policies can be taken up for villages and what kind of social security or social programs can be taken up to the population of various category who are residing in the town and we have data here there are in the village 1200 children 2500 boys and girls 3600 young men and women 2100 middle aged men and women and 900 elderly persons this is what the data are related to population category of village similarly we have data on the town the data on town goes like this there are 1200 children 3100 boys and girls 4000 young men and women 2300 middle aged men and women and 1800 elderly persons friends having looked at this data in order to represent the data by percentage bar chart what would we are supposed to do is convert this data into percentages it can be done easily divide the figures by total of the observation multiplied by 100 what we get is data in terms of percentages so therefore if we divide 1200 by total of this column that is 10300 what we get is and multiplied by 100 what we get is 11.65 like that percentage figures are calculated for village on the similar lines percentages are calculated for figures which are given for towns of various categories of population group that professor kaji want to study now the same information is presented in the form of percentage bar charts so there is one bar one one component bar chart for village another component bar chart for town both are with a height of 100 because data is converted into percentages and the total of the percentage has to be 100 and that is there and you look, look friends for comparison if you look at the village you see you see how much 34.95% of the population belongs to young men and women means what a planning can be done for providing employment to the young men and women because they represent the larger portion of the population as far as village population is concerned and then comes and then comes second one boys and girls and therefore planning can also be done for boys and girls as far as government policies are concerned so therefore when we are able to represent the categories in terms of percentage it will help us to plan for social programs if the government is planning to take up in the future and that way there is an advantage of presenting data in the percentage component bar chart and similarly there is another uh, component bar chart placed on the town that is also totally equal to 100 but if you look at the components we see that 24% has gone for middle aged men and women and sorry 31.25% has gone for again young men and women and next comes 24.1% then comes 17.96% boys and girls and uh, kids seems to be more here in towns that is 12.08% and elderly persons seems to be 12.5%
So, in the sense that if you compare village and town, you will find that there are more old agers in town. Could be because of the medical and other comfortable facilities available in the town, and therefore you will find more proportion of elderly persons in the town than villages. And uh, like that, comparison can be done between the village and town, and also within the village and within the town, uh, the various population categories can be compared. This is what the advantage of analyzing data using percentage bar diagram. Friends, having looked at this, let us go to another kind of bar chart. And this new bar chart is termed as multiple bar diagram. Friends, this multiple bar diagram is useful in the case where there are more components related to different groups. For example, in one village, all different population categories. Another village, same number of categories. Third village, same number of categories. If you want to compare between the villages and within the villages, you need an approach and that approach is called multiple bar chart for effective, again for effective presentation and effective comparison. Friends, this multiple bar chart goes like this. In a situation where two or more sets of interrelated phenomena or variables are to be presented graphically, multiple bar diagrams can be used. In this case, set of adjacent bars, one for each variable is drawn. Proper and equal spacing is given between different sets of bars. This is with an intention to distinguish between different bars in the set different colors or shades or dots can also be used for again for effective presentation. Friends, to understand the utility of multiple bar diagram, let us look at one example. Friends, this example is uh, from the data collected by Professor D. M. Madhuri, Chairman Department of Economics. What professor has done is he has collected data on profits in thousands of three companies situated in Bijapur. Vijaypura for the last 5 years. Professor would like to present the data by suitable bar diagram for effective comparison and the data given below is for presentation. Friends, the data goes like this. For 5 years from 1914-15 to 18-19, Professor Madri has collected, has collected data of the three companies, collected data on the three companies with regard to their profits. Company A's profits goes like this, 120 for the year 1419, 135 for the next year, 140, 160 and 175 for the successive years. Similarly, company B profits goes like this, 90,000, 95,000, 108,000, 120,000 and 100,000. This is what the data on profits of company B over the last 5 years. Similarly, Professor Madri has also collected data on profits of company C and it goes as 140,000 for 14-15, 120 for the next year, 135,000 for the successive year, 100 and 150 year, 50,000 profit for the successive years. This is what the information on profit of 3 companies over last 5 years. Now, the professor wants to represent this data for effective usage and effective uh, references and effective understanding and also for effective comparison between the companies and within the companies. What he has done is, he has used multiple bar diagram for effective references. Friends, if you look at this multiple bar chart, we have sets of bars, three, se three bars for 14-15 another 3 bars means 3 bars represents 3 companies, profits of 3 companies and uh, next set of 3 bars for 14, 16, another 3 sets of bar for 15, 16, 17 and like that up to 18 and 19. Now, comparison between the years can be done, within a year between the companies can be done. So, therefore, this is multiple bar application comes where there are more number of categories within the group 
and therefore, a suitable diagram for presenting data collected by Professor Madri on the profits of three companies of the related to four, five years is presented by multiple bar chart and this is the very effective way of presenting with data. Again, let me repeat, this presentation is for effective comparison between the years and within the year, but between the companies. And this is what the advantage of multiple bar diagram. Friends, now let us go to another new kind of thing. This is deviation bar diagram. The application of this deviation bar, bar diagram is, is goes like this. Deviation bars are specially useful for graphical presentation of net quantities like net, net surplus, net deficit, net profit, net loss, net imports, net exports, etc. Whenever we come across data presentation for data related to this net quantities, this deviation bar comes into help. And to understand what exactly we mean by deviation bar diagram, friends, let us look at an example wherein Professor S. B. Kamasetti, Chairman of the Department of Commerce. What Professor has done is, he has collected data on imports and exports in million rupees, in million rupees and Professor want to present this data by a suitable chart and suitable chart in this case seems to be deviation chart. Why? Because if you look at the net values, net values sometimes comes to be positive and negative. For example, here the data professor professor kamsetti collected data on data from 2012 to 2017 on imports and exports and therefore net trade of balance if you look at for the year 2012 net trade balance seems to be 15 million for 2013 it is 23 million for 2014 it is minus 8 million and therefore uh, during 2014 there is a loss in the business. Similarly, further loss is observed in the year 2015 that amounts to be minus 10 million and in 2017 or 16-17 also a net loss is observed and that, that looks to be minus 53 million and minus 25 million and therefore, to represent data on balance of trade because the figures on balance of trade are both in positives and negatives and therefore, for effective understanding of the data, deviation bar chart seems to be the best mode of presentation and therefore, this deviation bar chart presented exactly on the right side of the table. You, you see uh, 15 represents net trade balance for the year 2012 and 2013 also there is an improvement in the net trade. But thereafter, friends, you, you will find that bars have gone down and because minus 8 million loss is observed in, in the year 2014 and in 15 again loss has increased to the level of 10, minus 10 million. But very unfortunate uh, information available in the data is that in, during 2016, there is huge loss. 53 million rupees of loss is observed in the business and then of course, slight improvement of course, there is a loss, but less amount of loss can be observed for 2017. So, these kind of various possible variety of informations contained in the data can be drawn, one can elicit these variety of information only by presenting data in an effective way using bar diagrams. Of course, data presentation in the table is also a presentation, data whatever is available in the table is also same thing, same information presented in the diagrams. But the difference between the two way of, two way of presentation is the diagrammatic way or graphical way of presentation of data seems to be more effective and the information collected understood persists for a longer period in the mind than referring the tables and that is what the advantage of graphical presentation of data. Friends, after having looked at this diagram, let us go to other kinds of data presentations. 
Next, a new kind of data presentation that we are dis going to discuss here is histograms. Friends, histograms are simply again like simple bar charts. The difference between simple bar charts and histograms is that in case of simple bar charts, bars are erected on the on the uniform baseline or single baseline with a spacing between the bars. Whereas in case of histogram, all the bars are presented adjacent to each. And the width of the bars are exactly equal to, sorry, width of the bars are exactly equal to the width of the corresponding class intervals, and the height of the bars are exactly proportional to the respective frequencies or respective values. And therefore, what is histogram? Let us define. It is one of the most popular and commonly used device for chart for charting continuous frequently distribution sorry continuous frequency distribution it consists in erecting a series of adjacent vertical rectangles on the sections of the horizontal axis with basis equal to the width of the corresponding class intervals friends and heights are equal to the frequencies of the corresponding classes as i told you this is exactly a modified simple bar chart with a difference that all the bars in the case of histogram are placed adjacent to each other width of the class are equal to width of the bars are equal to width of the class intervals height of the bars are exactly equal to the corresponding frequencies of class intervals and friends here here there is an ex one example for illustration draw a histogram for the following frequency distribution here we have income in thousands we have a income group and on the right side of the table in the second column we have number of persons what do, what i mean to say is there are 12 persons whose income belongs to 10 to 20000 group and there are 30000 persons their income belongs to 20 to 30000 group like that we have data on number of persons belonging to the respective income groups and the same information friends uh, is presented on the right side in the form of histogram and you will see here that bars are erected on uh, x axis with a width equal to the respective width of the class intervals in this case it is 10 and heights are exactly equal to heights are exactly equal to the corresponding values corresponding frequencies i think there is some mistake here i am sorry i'm sorry here uh, maybe what has happened here is this histogram diagram presentation what is presented here is not related to this graph this has happened because of the cut paste technique used in the uh, while the preparing the slides but anyway let me tell you corrected friends the first one whatever it is there it should be 12 second one must be of height 30 third one must be of height 35 fourth one must be of height 65 then uh, bar must have a height of 45 and uh, next high i uh, mean bar must have a height of 25 and last one must have a height of 18 oh, sorry for this uh, inconvenience but uh, nothing wrong uh, these bars these bars must be of height 12 30 35 65 45 25 and 18 sorry for this mistake friends after having studied histogram uh friends let me make a correction uh if there is any if there are any queries related to histogram they can contact me any any time friends after having looked at histogram let us look at frequency polygon this is another way of presenting data but by line chart but by line chart and the definition of frequency polygon goes like this frequency polygon is another device of graphic presentation of a frequency distribution of continuous type or grouped and discrete both this frequency polygon can be drawn for both continuous data and discrete data in case of discrete distribution frequency polygon is obtained on plotting the frequencies on vertical axis against the corresponding values of variable what i mean is this is nothing but a simple line chart of mid values of the class intervals if there are class intervals against the corresponding 
frequencies and then these points are joined by a straight line and the resultant line will be a frequency polygon. So, let us look at one example for illustrating frequency polygon. Friends, here there are there is an information on number of accidents and number of drivers. For example, if you look at the table, there are 80 drivers that they have committed no accidents, whereas 44 drivers have committed one accident. Like there are 68 drivers, they have committed uh, two accidents. Like that, we have information on number of accidents and number of drivers. So, therefore, you, you, we can take number of accidents on x axis and number of drivers on y axis and the points so obtained are joined by straight line and the resultant line, line chart is termed as frequency polygon. Friends now, after having studied one dimensional data presentation, now let us look at two dimensional diagrams. This is also an another technique of presenting data whenever the situation whenever situation ask for two dimensional uh, uh, diagrams we are supposed to switch on uh, uh, switch over from one dimensional to two dimensional let us see under what situation two dimensional diagrams we need friends here line or bar diagrams discussed earlier are one dimensional diagrams because the magnitude of the observations were represented by only one dimension like number of accidents, number of divers, those kind of things. However, in two dimensional diagrams, the magnitudes of the given data are presented by the area of the diagram. When you say area, we can make use of two dimensions like horizontal axis and vertical axis. One dimension could be width, another dimension could be height. So, in such situation for uh, calculating area of the rectangles, we need both height and uh, height, uh, length and uh, width and height. So, therefore, this amounts to dim two dimensions. Hence, such kind of data can be represented by rectangles. What, uh, what are rectangles? A rectangle is a two dimensional diagram because it is based on the area principle. Since the area of the rectangle is given by product of its length and breadth, as I told you, height and breadth both mean the same thing. Both dimensions are considered. So, therefore, let us take an example wherein both dimensions are involved in the given data and in the given table. Example goes like this, the data on production of commodity in a factory is given in table 100 units produced represent data by rectangles. It is not 100 units, it is 1000 units. I am sorry, there is again a typing mistake. Friends, if you look at the items there are four items, cost of the raw material is one item, direct expenses is another item on which the amount is assigned and indirect expenses is another category and profit is the last category. So, therefore, amounts related to these four categories are given and this data is converted into units. For example, five units for cost of raw material is assigned. Why? Because uh, how, how did we got this 5 unit? This 5000 is divided by the total number of units, total number of units that is 1000. So, therefore, 5000 divided by 1000 would be 5, five and similarly, units for direct expenses is calcula calculated and units for direct expenses and profit are also calculated and they are presented in the third column. And these units friends are presented in the rectangles. So, width of the rectangle is, we have all categories here, width of the rectangle is 1 and height is taken as value of the units that are calculated here and in, the, in that sense they are two dimensional. One dimension is presented along horizontal axis, vertical axis is presented through units of these categories. So, therefore, Friends, for the rectangle associated with cost of raw material is of height 5 units width 1 unit and similarly rectangle, similarly rectangle associated with 
direct expenses is of height 2 units and width 1 unit and like that it goes. Another kind of two dimensional data presentation seems to be squares that is called square diagram. Square diagrams are specially useful if it desire to compare graphically the quantities which differ widely from one another. For example, the population of different countries at the given point of time or population of the same country at a different point of times can be represented by squares. And what we do here is we convert the given data into smallest units and then rectangle squares are drawn based on the un uh, proportionate values. For example, here look at the table information given the table. Friends, there are three countries A, B, C and D. Yield per hectare, hectare are also given here and what is done here is the data given are the square roots of the data given are calculated and then ratios of the sides of the squares are calculated. In the sense, look at the three values 18.7, 25.4 and 33.5. In order to express in terms of ratios what is done here, divide all the three values by a smallest value. What is smallest value here is 18.7. Divide all these three square roots by 18.7. What we get is 1, 1.36 and 1.79. What I mean is unit for A, country A is 1. If country A unit is 1, country B, B, B will be of 1.36 size. Then country C will be of size 1.79 and therefore, the yield per hectare of all the three countries are in the ratio 1 is to 1.36 is to 1.79 and therefore, three rectangles are drawn here. First rectangle is of, uh, of size 1 centimeter both uh, high uh, width and length. Second rectangle is of size 1.36 both length and width and third rectangle is of is of uh, value 1.79 both width and height. So, why because oh, now all the three can be if you look at all these three you can easily notice that yield for a hect fact per hectare of A is the smallest, yield for hectare of C is the highest. So, this kind of comparison can easily be done using two dimensional diagrams. Friends, now let us look at another chart that is called circular chart or pie chart. This is another way of presenting data. Of course, this information can also be presented by simple bar chart, but for effective presentation and also for different way of presentation, this pie chart is created and wherein what we do here, here is there will be different categories and respective values and respective values are converted into degrees. How do we do that? The values of the categories are divided by total value of the category multiplied by 360. What we get is degrees related to specific category and that is what is done here in this example. See this example is the following table shows the area in millions of square kilometers of oceans of the world. We have how many? 6 1, 2, 3, 4, we have 5 oceans like Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Antarctic, Arctic. The ocean related to these oceans, the sea related to these oceans in terms of million square kilometers are given here. For example, the area related to Pacific is 70.8 million square kilometer and that of Atlantic is 41.2 million square kilometer like that we have data on other oceans and these data are converted into degrees. For example, 70.8 divided by total value is 152.9. Therefore, if you divide 70.8 by 152.9 and multiply by 360, what we get is the data in degrees and that amounts to 166.7. 
and this section I mean this portion can be uh, identified in the circle from the center and that portion will be represented by that category in this case it is specific and this amounts to 166.7 degrees. So therefore and in the form of note I have given here the degrees are calculated dividing each observations by total, total value of all the categories and total value of all categories in this case is 152.9 and then multiplied by 360 and the same information whatever is available in the table is presented in a pie chart and that is visible on the right side of the table and if you look at the table usually you will find more amount of spaces has gone for has gone for Pacific and then it is of Atlantic and then Indian Ocean and like that it goes very portion is assigned to Arctic. So, then this is how data presentation seems to be important and effective especially for eliciting information from the collected data effective method of presentation of data for easy reference ready reference and for more understanding of the data can be done through graphical presentation. With this I would like to thank all of you friends. Thank you. Thank you very much. Illi avarege open nasa nidida professor S. B. Madigi avarege vandhanegalu. Matthundu open nasa dandige matte beti marana namaskara.